Hello, I'm Wireman. Uh, Virtual Fighter 5 Ultimate Showdown has just launched. It's free right now on PlayStation Plus, uh, so there's loads of interest in it. Please check it out. It's a super fun game. I've been learning the previous version, Virtual Fighter 5 Final Showdown, for the past six months or so. Uh, it has quite a small community by comparison, so I've been fortunate enough to get advice from some of the best players out there, and hopefully I can share some of that with you today to help you with getting started. Starting with tip one, it is Final Showdown. So there are a few changes, uh, visually, between this and Final Showdown, but mechanically they are extremely close games, if not identical. This means that there's basically over a decade of resources already available at your disposal on day one of Ultimate Showdown. If you go to virtualfighter.com, link in the description, all of the Final Showdown combos should work. All the frame data seems to map over perfectly, the character guides, all that stuff. There's never been uh, a day one release of a game quite like this, where there's so much of the discovery that's already been done for you. So have a look around uh, and enjoy having all that tech at your fingertips right away, really. Number two, everyone is viable. In terms of balance, there are tiers and all of that in this game as well, but there aren't that many characters overall and competitively they're all quite close to each other and at least close enough that you're not going to regret picking someone up now and then feel the need to change six months down the line from now as you get more competitive. They've all got really unique attributes uh, and fighting styles as well so mess around in the command training, find a good fit for you and, and don't look back, you know, they're, they're all good. Three, the move lists are long but they can be made shorter. Although this game is only played with three buttons, the combinations of them along with directions, stances, positioning, even how drunk your character is uh, means that the amount of possible moves your character can do can be quite overwhelming at first. Much like in Tekken and other 3D fighters, a top moves approach to your character, of picking out 10 of their better moves and trying to stick to those while you learn will really help you get over the complexity and you can start adding other stuff as you learn. The life bars drain quite fast in Virtual Fighter, so 3 or 4 well placed moves can sometimes be enough to get the job done. Number 4, Rock Paper Scissors. All fighting games have a degree of Rock Paper Scissors to them and Virtual Fighter is no exception. In fact, it takes it very, very seriously, more so than other games. So as you'd expect, block and beat strikes, strikes beat throws, and you throw people that block too much. Most games have a handful of exceptions to these rules, but Virtual Fighter is pretty strict. If your opponent tries to throw, even in some scenarios where you'd think that it's close to guaranteed for them, a jab or a crouching jab will interrupt that animation. A throw is as big a commitment as anything else, and if you find that your throws aren't landing, there's a good chance they're pressing buttons a lot and you need to adjust your strategy to take advantage of that. Number five, guess better. So on that note of strategy, this game will have you feeling like you're in a guessing game quite a lot early on. Uh, and at a high level, pushing players to feel that way is actually pretty central to the strategy. This is often referred to as Nitaku, or the two alternative force choice approach. More of that on virtualfighter.com. But it kind of means getting people into 50-50 scenarios a lot. There's often more to it than just a guess though. So before you get frustrated about how your opponents always seem to guess right, have a think about whether the choices they're making have anything to do with the situation that you're in. If your life bar is low, they might be going for whatever option is the safe bet for getting the knockout. If you're near the edge, they might be going for the option that pushes you into the river. A good player can hide these decisions quite well, but if you're feeling helpless, try to look around and place your bets accordingly. It does seem like magic the first time that you watch Virtual Fighter players at a high level guessing really well, but this is normally what it boils down to. Number six, sidestepping is different. If you're coming over from other 3D fighters, particularly Tekken, sidestepping plays a slightly different role in this game. If you used to a nice cheat sheet that tells you predominantly to sidestep left for one character and right for another, that doesn't quite work here. For starters, everyone is effectively Huarang, and what I mean by that is they can have either foot forward at any time. So the direction you want to sidestep in is always changing with that as well. Pay attention to their feet and your feet and the fact that your moves that catch sidestepping aren't always going to be travelling in the same direction. So if your left foot's forward, your haymaker might track left, but if your right foot is forward, then the same haymaker might track to the right. On top of this, you'll notice that if you sidestep the opponent successfully, your character will make a noise. But if you just sidestep for no reason, they won't. If you hear that noise, it's time to hit the opponent as hard as you can and reap the rewards of your 3D proficiency. But if you don't hear it, you might want to think more defensively. It's not necessarily your turn. So number seven, taking turns. This is a game about knowing when it's your turn to strike and when it's your turn to block. However, due to things uh, we've already mentioned, like rock, paper, scissors, nitaku, and sidestepping, you can actually steal turns if you're brave enough. In some games, this is seen as mashing or being quite scrubby, but the more you learn about the offensive and defensive options in Virtual Fighter, the more you'll realize that sometimes the least safe option is the best one. And nobody in Virtual Fighter is gonna call you a scrub for dick jabbing them to death when it's their turn every now and then. Some well-placed aggression when you're on defense will get you out of some sticky situations. Number eight, wait. One really cool, really unique aspect of Virtual Fighter 5 is the fact that every character weighs a different amount. So matchup knowledge isn't just about learning when your turn is. You have to pick combos that keep them juggled for the longest based on how much they've had for dinner. Heavier characters fall faster and often they'll land closer. Sometimes you just won't get a combo off anything at all with them. If you check the combo lists on virtualfighter.com you'll see most characters have some weaker general options. 
that might combo maybe 90% of the cast. But as you dig deeper, picking out the floatier combos for the lighter characters and the ones that scoot the heavier characters along the floor will nab you some bonus damage. For now though, just know that when your character fails to scoop up Taka or your combo seems to keep dropping on the bigger characters, that's totally meant to happen. The game's not broken. Number nine, the tutorials are pretty good. The tools you're given to learn Virtual Fighter 5 Ultimate Showdown aren't as good as the legendary mountains of stuff that you get in Virtual Fighter 4 Evolution, but they're still pretty good and worth an hour of your time, especially some of the later ones which will teach you some of the shortcuts and option selects and things like that. For the people who do just want to jump straight into the game, some of the things that you're going to miss are things like being able to get up in different ways. So if you press guard, punch and kick at the same time as you hit the ground, or do that with a mixture of directions, you can tech roll or you can get up quickly rather than just staying on the ground and getting stomped on. And you can also get up by mixing up mid and low kicks. Just don't fall into a habit of doing the same one over and over again because you will get punished for that. And lastly, 10, get stuck in. With the exception of a couple of characters, this isn't a game where zoning and the mid range are going to be your friend. Neutral is a land of equal opportunity, so the real fun is in actually getting up close and off axis from your opponent so that you can keep the odds in your favour. Not only is this where the aforementioned turn stealing happens, you also get damage and hit advantage bonuses by hitting and throwing the opponent from the side. So don't be shy about keeping the pressure on. It takes a while to get comfortable with dashing up after you get punched in the face. See the last trial in the tutorial for more on that one. But once you get the hang of it, this is a fighting game that plays like no other. It's fast, it's in your face, you're always thinking, you never really get a break for the entire round. It's super tense, and at any moment, it could completely flip into your opponent's favour. So learning to bask in all of that carnage is really a big key to, to getting the most enjoyment out of this one. And those are my top 10. Hopefully these are going to help you get into the high octane pace of Virtual Fighter quite quickly. If you think I've missed anything or you'd like to know more, feel free to let me know in the comment section. Big thanks to the big man David at Sega Europe for letting me get my hands on this daily uh, so I could get this video out sooner and hopefully help you guys out on day one. Uh, I'll see you all online.